Hello, my name is Ethan, and welcome back to another episode of Path of Exile Scourge League 3.16. In this episode, I'm going to be going over my plans for the 3.16 League start. I want to give you guys my plans, so maybe uh, someone out there will want to uh, follow along with the stream so they know what is going on. Um, yeah. To start it off, I think it's a great idea to mention if you haven't seen it, because I've posted a lot of videos in the last couple days. Uh... Basically, this is my League Starter. This is the one I will be playing. My top summoner uh, skeleton League Starter for Necromancer. This is it. Uh, it has all the timestamps, all the breakdown leveling, all, all the stuff, all the recommendations, uh, skills, leveling, tree, new tree, new masteries, everything. Uh, highly recommended. It's absolutely so strong. It's one and a half times stronger than last season. They, they buffed the skill tree from the initial time I made this video. And then uh, my plans for after this league starter uh like w well obviously i start with this league starter and now we're in the season uh my plans are to make early upgrades with the this build so what would i upgrade first i made a video going over a bunch a bunch of upgrades you can make to the build but now i'm gonna after a few days of thinking and, and making all those other builds uh i have come up with a kind of order to the early upgrades potentially so uh, one of the first upgrades you can make is getting Val summon skeletons so I went and prepared all this stuff actually so Val Skelly is the first upgrade I would make and uh, stay tuned till the end of the video I have a special carry on golem aura stacker thing to show you against Maven I want to show you uh, what is possible again it's another one of those like just showcase highlights like look what what well, was it? this is a thing so anyways back to the back to the skelly sorry for going off topic i just thought of it when i was doing all this prep uh, for the skellies so uh there's essence of fear and that showed deafening here but there's a bunch of different ones there's uh shrieking and all the lower tiers of essence deafening is the highest and then you can craft this on a one-handed weapon or two-handed weapon for flat minion damage uh this i like to go for pr pretty early on I use like screaming, shrieking, then I upgrade to deafening and I just sell the ones after I stop using them. Like when I upgrade them, I just sell them and they usually sell for more than the essence cost because people don't know how to get the minion damage on the wand. Even though the actual wand mod says essence, like it'll say how you got it. It'll say essence basically, but it's okay. Point is, you, you, you yeah, I recommend making some minion damage uh, wands or two-handed weapon. Uh... Alberon's Warpath Boot Early Rush is a uh, easy plus one skeleton. Uh, this also makes me think of there's the crafts. There's a craft on the helmet for plus one skeleton. You might also be able to get an Elder Amulet with item level 68 to get an extra skeleton. That's pretty cool too. Uh, I think there might even be a Delve mod on the amulet for getting a skeleton. Yeah, it's really cool. So many ways to get extra skeletons for pretty cheap early on, uh, which is very impactful since we can summon four per cast. Uh, very early on, I'd be recommending rushing. Obviously, this is standard. I'm searching standard because the league hasn't started yet. I'm just giving you guys um, the, the plan. So I would search a six link, four red, two blue. You could have some white in here. Uh, body armor so you don't get a weapon. And then you can find some things. Obviously, this then doesn't include white sockets, like I said. And it won't get tabulas, etc. So you could change this. Or just put in six. And the other alternative, you could do a six link. And then you ha you change the colors yourself with the crafting bench. Or potentially the new tainted chrome. They, ch they added the new tainted chrome orb that can edit corrupted items. Um, the cheapest one is incorrupted and it has nearby enemies or blind at uh, four, four orbs a chance for one year it was listed. Okay, next. Uh, I show that you could search for, this is crazy guys. Okay, I need you to be sitting down for this. You can search for a plus two level of socketed duration gems. Um, for skeletons because just like Herald of Purity, somebody pointed out that skeletons were duration so you can get a plus two duration chest plate. So with a 21, oh, I forgot to put this in here. This was supposed to be first. Uh, I was curious to search it on standard, a uh, level 21 Valskelly 5C. Um, 
So this is a huge upgrade, and I would recommend it before this. But basically, if you get a 21 Valskelly, and then you also get the plus 2 level of stocked duration, you also have the plus 2 from Unnatural Strength because you're a Necromancer, your Skelly goes to level 25, you get an additional Skelly. What? That's insane. Uh, then I also show you can search for a Bone Helm for the extra 20 minion damage. Uh, <laughs> Maw of Mischief, guys. We should go that. And you can also, in this build specifically, Carry On Golem buff effect. 150% buff effect for Carry On Golem is better than the Skelly damage. So I highly recommend the Carry On Golem buff effect. This might be expensive on a Bone Helmet because everyone will be going for this for my Skelly build. Um, I really want this. Please don't make it too expensive, guys. <laughs> uh, you can also get Elder so that you can get the minion life. And so then you can get, when you have socketed gems or supported by minion life on the helmet, then you can go and animate Guardian uh, in the build, which automates the vulnerability and gets you Fortify and gets you nearby enemies, take 9% increased physical damage, and it's just good in the build, right? Uh, you can also make a Trigger Wand. So you get, I, I would assume in the beginning, we were not going to have a plus two wand. So I, I'm going to craft some wands with some Mess and Saphir or something, get some extra mods like reses, and then craft trigger, which is trigger a socketed spell when you use a skill. Um, and then I'm going to automatically trigger my Desecrate and my Flesh Offering that way, probably. Um, on, uh, and that's for the Skelly build. Uh, and the Skellies will automatically cast it, basically, by me summoning the Skellies, I'm automatically casting the wand mods, yeah. Uh, the wand gems. So then I sort of show that you can go for an early large cluster. Instead of going for a 3 notable that'll probably be like 10x or more early. Uh, you can go for an 8 passive with renewal rotten claws. And then this could allow you to run impale dread banner with rotten claws. And this is uh, acceptable. And then the real benefit, the, the super benefit of why you do this early. Um, the extra benefit that everyone has forgotten about in PoE. Uh, is Fortress Covenant. You could slot this in early because some of those jewels could be hard to craft. So you ju you could just get 45 minion damage and some block. Or you could get 16 attack speed. Well, 12 to 16 attack speed. This is 35 to 45 minion damage and 12 to 16 attack speed. And then you may say, But Ethan, the downside. Mo minions have reduced move speed and minions take increased damage. Isn't that terrible? Uh, when you put this in a large cluster jewel, it deletes the downside. There is no downside. Only damage. Only damage. Pogchamp. Uh, those are all the early game upgrades. Or the plan. That's the plan at least I made. And that takes me pretty goddamn far into the skellies. And that's my actual like league start. Oh, uh, and that's just the gear. I want to now uh, go over my actual like plan for the season. I plan I'm going to go into the season, start on the beach... We're going to do every Scourge in every single area like I do every single season. I did every expedition while leveling. It took really long. <laughs> it was fun. I did every ritual. I did every every single season. I do the League Mechanic during the leveling because there you will never get another opportunity to experience it ever again. It will never be the same. It's so fun and it, it has been rewarding in the past where I don't feel like I've wasted my time. I, I feel like I always come out of it with more knowledge. I learn more. Especially Expedition was huge to have a bigger understanding of how that League Mechanic worked before wasting our currency in maps and stuff was was really nice we already knew what was going on by maps like that was nice and it felt like a easy way of getting into it gradual learning and uh so i'm gonna be playing scourge so then i expect some great returns from scourge i also expect to be corrupting scourging my items so that they have the extra implicits and they and that's gonna add a lot of power to our builds guys i'm expecting about 30 percent more power out of it's it's obviously just completely it's a guess. I'm just guessing, but I'm gonna guess that the scourge power that we haven't seen because they haven't shown us any of them. Well, they've shown us a few and they're really powerful, but they haven't shown us all of them. Is what I meant. And so when we see them all, we're gonna be like, oh my god, this shit's broken. And then, yeah, that's our missing power, our missing defenses, or whatever thing we wanted to square up. Uh, elemental ailments. I don't know. Curses. Man, they could do everything. Flies anything even new mods that we've never seen before they could potentially do but that's just scourge and then i have getting well i'm gonna do league mechanics up to maps that i find obviously and then 
when I get to maps, I'm going to do all master missions that I get in white and yellow because I will never go back to white and yellow maps, so don't save them. There is no point. Do all your master missions for extra map sustain, extra loot. Um, you could get beasts. You could get the the June unveils early. You could get the Alva Temple stuff, potentially sell it early. I don't know. Maybe some early uniques or the crafts. I don't know if the crafts are still in Alva Temple, actually. Um, but Delving could be okay early since they updated and changed it and made it faster for better loot. And they doubled the rewards from chess and half the amount of chess and made delving more rewarding and made there more bosses and made the bosses more rewarding and they did a lot of shit to delving too so pretty much I, i'm gonna be abu i call it abusing master missions because they're they're like free free loot and then i'm gonna be mapping and i'm gonna do every league mechanic that just comes up in my maps i'm gonna be specifically just running through the maps as fast as possible so that's flame dashing um phase running if i end up fitting it eventually without not running skeletons eventually and then um we're gonna basically kill packs big packs more important if there's like one monster i don't really care that much and then i'm gonna do leak mechanics get the loot kill map bosses always and my main priority is going to be map progression so i want to get map completion get all my maps done get all the awakening bonus uh, get all the uh, watchstones, get all the Maven Atlas passives, get all the power unlocked, have everything that's basically, I call it like free power, it's the progress, you just unlock, this is additional free things that you get just by playing the game that you should do, and then you when you've unlocked them, you don't have to do them again, they're just unlocked and awesome, so yeah, you just want to unlock your Atlas, because you're just going to have worse map sustain until you complete more maps, and you're going to have worse map mods uh, until you have the awakening bonus objectives. And you're going to have um, worse map sustain as also with the awakening bonus objectives. Yeah, I mean, sorry, awakening level. You also have the watchstones for map sustain. You also have the Maven Atlas passives for all those bonuses, which I made a video about going over which Atlas passives I went over. And then those also buff up the master missions. So it's all just stacking, compounding, and uh, the Atlas is so good this season. So I plan to start with the Atlas, push my Atlas, just like I did last season, make a lot of progress, push our build, use skeletons to to melt the game, and then uh, we could transition into some side content like Heist, Blight, um, etc. Preparing, like, and yeah, basically chill out with the other, with the side content after we've pushed really hard. And once it, maybe I burn myself out really hard with the uh, mapping because I go hard in the paint for the first day or two. But we should make a lot, and I and I expect some good returns off of off of this route. So there's no like special cheese, no special strat, nothing, no like get quick, rich, quick, get rich quick scheme or whatever. Yep, it's just normal playing strategy and <laughs> progression and then unlocking the normal base game most people if i try to make this as like a how to make money currency video they're like this wasn't any cheese i'd already knew how to do that yep but i mentioned this for maybe somebody who hasn't seen the full picture of playing the game and this is just you the things that you kind of have to do anyways you should just do in the beginning because if you do the things you want to do first, and then you have to forcibly do the things you were going to do anyways, you should have just done them in the first place. You see what I'm saying? So it's just the doing things in a way, in an order that uh, unlocks your character, basically, and unlocks the progress and unlocks the power is going to be the most impactful, probably, uh, early. And that's what I'm going to do. And so we could rush Heist and make a lot of money, and we could rush Blight and make a lot of money, but honestly, this mapping progress and unlocking everything and getting to high tier maps fast is really powerful and still makes a lot of money. And uh, I, and I think the one part is all the time saved in the future is the big and and how it feels like getting all that shit done the whole time. You're like, oh yeah, I'm making so much progress. You just completed the campaign. You're completing your atlas. You're like, oh yeah, and then you have that shit unlocked permanently for the whole season. It's just it's just good. Um, so yeah, let's get into the carry on golem thing now. So before I show the carry on golem thing, I want to show the POB because it's going to be confusing. Uh, basically, if somebody opens this up, they're, yeah, they're going to be confused. This was a POB. 
I don't even know when this build was. Honestly, this was standard, and it's just named Ethan Golems, and <laughs> it's an aura stacker with Saka walls, and I have my double corrupted fortify weapon, and it only pumps out 1.4 million damage per carry on. We have four carry on. This runs Stone Chaos. It's a it's the three golem build with the billion harmonies. And it's carry on golem, and then it has 7,000 energy shield. It's actually crazy. And 800 regen. It's so tanky. And uh, 81 reses, so it didn't go to 300 aura effect. Um, and it's just purities in the chest plate. <laughs> uh, it's so crazy. So, yeah, I wanted to show this first to show the DPS. It's uh, basically 5.6, which isn't very high. But then how well it does against the maven, I want you to enjoy this. So yeah, uh, it's an int stacking, ES stacking, aura stacking, carry on golem. Yep, enjoy it. Wait, what was this watcher's eye? Fizz taken as lightning with a purity of lightning. F uh, mana, 18% of mana as ES. I remember when we had that as clarity. It was 18 before. And unaffected by burning ground while affected by purity of fire. This is a disgusting jewel. Holy shit. <laughs> So, what was the point of doing that? I wanted to show that uh, some of my old versions of the carry-on, because I showed the Reaper of how that how it looked, right? And then we could make the comparison to how it would be with the POBs that we have planned for the new season. Uh, with this, I could show you that this is what 5 million looked like at Maven with carry-on golem. And then, well, the rest of it's kind of irrelevant, but it's kind of cool. And uh, technically that it's not even this much it's in between 1 million and 1.4 per so it's a 4 to 5 million dps because of the uptime of avian might isn't all the time and also technically the charges aren't all the time either so yeah this is pretty impressive for like a 20 second maven kill on the final phase for very little damage and uh, yeah, carry on golem just looks so solid still, even to this day. So I expect in 3.16, this is my prediction. Um, basically, obviously early, uh, our, we're kind of playing like the same game 3.15. But then once we start getting the new power, the scourge and the new items that are super end game insanity that we have never even been able to imagine before, we're going to be able to create builds when we start getting these items that are more powerful than anything we've created before, like the 12 link, for example. And so that's just the, that's all you need to hear. 12 link um, that that alone will make a massive difference to where if you are doing, let's say, of double damage, just as a simple a big damage that, because of a 12 link, then you could then give up a ton of DPS get, and getting a bunch of that free survivability they added to the game. And yeah, we're going to have some new top tier high end builds that we actually, I don't even think we're, we were able to possibly theory craft before the league started because we don't even know some of the stuff that's going to come still. Uh, like the Scourge modifiers, one could be enabling to every build that changes the entire game. Everyone's insanely broken uh point is that i think we'll be more powerful than ever so that um we're basically going to take whichever minion feels the best so if you had to compare it besides damage imagine this is what i'm trying to say imagine damage is irrelevant so normally we would pick stone golems because they do more damage than the stone uh than the zombie and the carry on golem right but if damage is irrelevant if they all do the same damage or ridiculously too much damage then you just take the one that feels the best. And out of stone, zombie, and carry on, the one that feels the best is carry on. So I think at the top end, just like I said in the past, carry on golem is like tornado shot. It's going to come out in softcore at the top end, uh, be number one because it feels the best with the most investment, even though it's not like 
for it, the investment it's not efficient it, it doesn't matter the the uh, power level of this season is going to be so crazy and that's why i showed this just to show look how nice and smooth carry on golem was on maven and uh and you can only imagine if it actually had damage <laughs> the damage the, the the damage the speed of the kill wasn't relevant it's how nice that was uh i hope you guys enjoyed this uh, i hope you enjoyed my little rant at the end uh this i guarantee that's gonna be correct like that i'm so confident and it's insane once i came up with that i was like yep that's it and that goes back to what i've been saying the whole time so with like carry on golem feeling the best and the ai and then be it being the tornado shot of minions and they killed syndicate operatives so m maybe even with the tr the shotgunning nerfed with the new stuff we get all the new power at the end game they we still could potentially make syndicate operatives work just because of how like if we're imagining that we could make carry on golems too strong then why not also syndicate operatives just a thought uh be optimistic right either way thank you guys for watching thanks for hanging out i hope you guys enjoyed that 20 second uh, maven clip and i hope you guys enjoyed looking in back at one of my old builds that got nerfed into the fucking ground god damn not another one dude Either way, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for hanging out. I'm going to take this opportunity. Oh, shit. Yeah, I was playing the build. I got a Maven Orb. Dude, this build's so sick. Look at the attribute. <laughs> look at the ES. And we're in stacking, dude. A thousand intelligence. This build's so sick to look at. And, like, <laughs> what is this? It's so weird. 50% crit reduction. We have a double corrupted chest plate, the double corrupted weapon. <laughs> what is this? So much intelligence. I have like 50, 60 int on every single gear piece. It's awesome. This this was... I like going back to my old characters. It's really fun. And it was to see how good Carry On Golem feels. Yeah. Either way. Like I said. Let's... Wait, wait, wait. Hold. Hold. I realized. I made this video. And I did the skeleton t talk at the beginning. And then I did the Carry On Golem. And I made it seem as if I was doing Carry On Golem. But I believe that I would be transitioning from the skeleton into stone, zombie, or carry-on. I'm not sure which one yet fully, uh, but stone looks really good with the elementalist and the 88 max LE res specters. And that one looks really fun. So does the zombies with the 83 max res and this, the carry-on golem with the zombies with the 83 max res. All of these sound so good. Uh, probably zombie or stone early just for the free power. But if I want the quality of life of how the carry-on golem feels, I could run that too. It's really easy to swap between these. Um, but yeah, probably stone or zombie. And uh, that, that I just needed to add this in here because I've realized I, this was the, the point of the video is the plan for the league start. So I should tell people which build I'm transitioning into. I'm not a hundred like I'm, get, I'm telling you right now. It's not a hundred percent. It's like 90 something. OK, it's 90 something percent. It's like pretty confident, but it is not guaranteed a hundred uh, just because. Well, like I said, the best feeling one is carry on golem, but then the best like free damage is zombie or stone. So. And it depends on cold iron point prices and the golem jewels for the golems, I guess, where the zombies doesn't require any of that. So, and, and it's different items, so we'll see entirely. Uh, either way, just add, added this in here, and now enjoy the rest. Let's take this opportunity. Wait. To thank my Patreon, my YouTube members who financially support the channel. I can't do this without you guys, so thank you guys for all the support, and thank you to anyone new who joins the Patreon of the YouTube members today, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye!